Jeff Koinange live at the poolside of the Intercontinental Hotel here talking about terrorism, extremism, radicalization, the war on terror in Africa. From Boko Haram in the west to Al-Shabaab in the east and everything else in between. A conference here in Nairobi was bringing together the best and the brightest, if you will, in the intelligence community, trying to find a way forward. And on the bench, Ambassador Francisco Gaetano Jose Madeira, the African Union's Center for the Study and Research on Terrorism, based in Algiers. So, Ambassador, we're talking before the break, and I said, look, Al Shabaab, you said they've been hit hard in Somalia, in Mogadishu, and around. But they keep hitting back as close as the gates of parliament, as close as the presidential palace. I mean, that's audacious. That is bold and that is brash. It's like, they, you know, they keep hitting back. Yes, uh, uh, definitely they keep hitting back, but not as much as they used to do before. Before they used to run the entire place. Before they used to collect taxes there. Before they used to control everyone who would come in. Now they can't do that. So there is a difference. Yes, they are bold. Yes, they are courageous. They are desperate. Yes, we have to recognize that we are dealing with a formidable enemy. And we have to prepare for that. And we are preparing for that. Yeah. These people will be defeated. Terrorism will be a thing of the past on the continent. Maybe it will take time, but it will definitely be a thing of the past. I was about to ask you that. Is that going to happen in our lifetime? Well, let it take the time it takes. But there is sufficient determination on the continent and readiness to put in place and invest the resources required to make enough sacrifice to make sure that terrorism does not have the upper hand on the continent. Because this is one of the biggest threats to peace and stability on the continent. As you know, without peace and stability, there can't be any meaningful development on the continent. So we cannot allow extremists, particularly, as you know, the kind of terrorism we are facing has got a very strong international component. We don't do, I want to allow foreigners of the continent to come and impose on us their own way of seeing things, their own opportunistic way of doing things, their own way of uh, distorting, manipulating religion for their own purposes. They will not have their way here. So I'm very convinced and I'm sure that we will defeat terrorism. Yeah, let's jump across the continent, Ambassador Boko Haram. Up until a few years ago, unheard of. Now they can literally controlling a, a wide swathe of Nigeria and into Cameroon, kidnapping people left, right and center, bombing the capital, Abuja. I mean, how, Ambassador, how, how have they been allowed? First of all, look at the, the type of countries we have. There are huge masses of land, long porous borders. Many areas of our countries do not have a permanent functioning, properly functioning government institutions. We have uh, many poor people lacking basics. So these become a very fertile ground for terrorists and international charities to come in and have their way. So these are weaknesses that we have to recognize and we recognize and we are as much as we can tackle them. But our economies are not growing at the speed that would be required for us to face these challenges in appropriate manner. Because the same resources that we use to fight terrorism, uh, they come from the same source for us to give health services to people, to provide health services, education, infrastructure, and uh, many other things. So that's why we need to join hands. Can Boko Haram be defeated? Of course. Can those children be found? Of course. They will. They can be found. It is also difficult because uh, uh, 
encounters are huge, as I told you. Uh, we need better organization, better coordination of services, and also Africans are Africans. Whether they're in Cameroon or in Nigeria or in Chad, so you cannot say that this African is a terrorist or this African is a kidnapped person unless somebody tells you, unless there is sufficient intelligence that can indicate to you that those are the people that have been uh, kidnapped in, in Chibok. Yeah. Well, that, okay, let's go back to Chibok. And, and when, when this whole story broke, everyone was offering help. The American CIA was offering help. MI6 was offering, Mossad was offering help. And I think the Nigerians took the help for the most part. But still, four, five months later, the girls haven't been found. I mean, if it was our kids, and you know how you would feel as a parent? Well, of course, I would feel very, very unhappy and very concerned, as I am. Even, not, not, even as I'm not their parents, I'm still very concerned as an African about what is happening. But at the same time, I must say that uh, I appreciate the effort that uh, Nigeria as a government is doing to be able to locate those people and recover them. Some yeah. people say they're doing nothing. Well, our contacts with the Nigerian authorities, they tell us that they're doing a lot. Well, unfortunately, the girls have not yet come back to their parents. So work has to continue. Mm. They must continue to work. Yes. Is it mostly Nigerians, Boko Haram, or is it regional? Are there foreign players in there? Is it a mixture? No, it's not even just regional. It's more than that. This is an international coalition of jihadists trying to exploit the weaknesses of the continent to advance their aims and their goals. So we are fighting a global terrorism, which is expressing itself on the continent. So we need to prepare for that. And that perhaps is one of the reasons why it is becoming difficult to defeat these people. Mm. They are financed by powerful cartels, wherever they are. They are linked to Al-Qaeda, Al-Qaeda International. They call themselves Al-Qaeda and Islamic Maghreb, some of them. Mm -hmm. And Boko Haram professes that it has played allegiance to Al-Qaeda Central. So these people are interconnected. They exchange experience, they exchange training, they exchange resources, they are coordinated, they receive information and uh, directions. So we need to look at it that way. So the world must unite against this evil. Our intelligence services on the ground, I, I just don't mean Kenya, I mean around Africa. Are we up to the task? Are they up to the task? We are getting better and better. That's what I can say. Yes. If. Uh, because of novelty of the situation, because of the nature, because of, 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 you know, you must take into consideration one thing. As I said, terrorism is not a crime like any other normal crime. It exploits, it comes to you and sees that you are hungry and you have no employment. And it works with you. It goes to a church or a madrasa or whatever and say, look, we are poor because those people are eating. These are very appealing approaches to people who are poor. And then they promise them, if you are with us, if you are with Islam, their Islam, mm -hmm. you not only eat, but you go to heaven, particularly when you are able to hit and kill an infidel. So we have weaknesses. These people are vulnerable. By becoming vulnerable, they are recruited. And most of the time, they get radicalized and they become the soldiers of these international jihadists. Mm. That's why, given the fact that we have serious uh, challenges in terms of resources, the most important approach to terrorism we have to take is prevention prevent terrorism. We need to prevent jihadists from recruiting, from having soldiers from our own midst, mm -hmm. by taking every step that is required to make sure that our children are not recruited. And, and those that are recruited, Ambassador, because there are many, oh, there's quite a few, children recruited, plucked out of villages, they disappear, their parents never hear from them again. How, how do we avoid that? Is it education? Is it our, our own
counter program? What is it? Well, if uh, the kid has been uh, kidnapped or recruited and it disappeared, what we need is eyes and ears that roam around and try to see if we can pick up some signal as to where those children are. And these are the intelligence services. That's why we are working very closely with the intelligence services. That's why we as African Union are present at this meeting of the most qualified intelligence services of the continent in order to air our view. But we don't have to mobilize them. They are sufficiently mobilized. They are worn to the cause of anti-terrorism. What we need to do and what we came here to do, apart from expressing solidarity and support uh, and admiration to what the people of Kenya are doing, is also to coordinate our action on how best we can hit on these people, how best we can streamline and refine our intelligence services to be able to adapt and uh, anticipate any activity by these jihadist groups. I was about to say, because for the most part, the today's terrorist seems to be getting smarter and smarter. It's like they're almost a step ahead, right? Yes. What do we need to hit to, to get a step ahead of them? First of all, let me tell you that uh, the main difference that exists is that uh, you as a state, you as a government, you have the entire country to protect. You have the entire population to protect. They, as terrorists, they have the entire country to select a target. They have the entire population to hit. So, you definitely are already in a very disadvantageous situation. And yet, you are obliged to protect those populations. So, you must refine. You must increase the number of your intelligence officers. Increase the number, increase the quality of training and sophistication. You must master the technology, uh, the, the new technologies, the networking uh, processes. You must be able to enter into a partnership with the people, with the communities particularly the border communities, to co-opt them as partners and work with them. Because these terrorists live in communities when they come in. Mm. If we, we partner with the communities, they will be in a position to help us know who has come in, who has not come in, who is behaving in a lord manner. And we, as specialist intelligence officers, will be able to understand, study, and conclude who that person is. And the police can be able to interpel those people. Mm. So we need that, first of all. Second, we need better interinstitutional coordination. Many times we have realized that uh, the institution of state charged with the task of ensuring safety and security of the country, of the infrastructure, and of the population. They don't talk properly with each other. They don't exchange information. They don't work in coordination. We need to overcome that. We need to stop the competition that exists uh, perhaps existed amongst these agencies whereby each one of them wants to be the number one it's me who brought this information it's me who discovered abc it's me who killed fazul it has to be us who killed fazul so the services the different agencies must know that they are just a piece in the puzzle they're working for a bigger organization and whatever they get they must convey to the others in real time. Not after one week, after you have run through the back door yeah. and informed the boss that, look, there is this. You have to do that in real time. 
so that we can act and respond in real time in an eff efficient way. Yeah. Yes, that's very important. Absolutely, Ambassador. Look, um, when Osama bin Laden was finally tracked down and killed, and this took almost 10 years since 9-11, uh, did you think that terrorism was not, had, take, had taken a big hit? Was that a big blow? Or because there's so many cells, you know, it's like a hydra, Al-Qaeda, like a hydra. You know, you cut off one head, another one pops up. Well, that the, the death of Bin Laden, of Osama Bin Laden, was a major, uh, a, a, a major event in counter-terrorism. Yes, it was. Definitely it was. Particularly the way these people act, it was a major. But uh, whether that in itself alone would be able to stop terrorism, well, the facts have shown that that's not the case. Terrorism is still there. But uh, definitely they got disorganized. They had to think on how better to organize in different ways. They went into hiding. In the past, it was Al-Qaeda Central that was distributing resources, distributing ideological approaches and all that. Now they have uh, uh, restructured themselves. They divide themselves into small cells. They rely most of the time on uh, local bodies. They give a degree of autonomy to those uh, uh, groups so that they can uh, uh, prepare their own uh, uh, programs and all that. They give just general directives and things like that. So we, they got a hit, a serious one. But we need to have more of those. Would we have thought that ISIS would declare a caliphate in Iraq. I mean, does that shock you people who study terrorism and extremism? Well, it, to me, it doesn't shock me because these people are capable of anything. You see, they don't follow any reasonable approaches than we do. They don't. They have their own logic. They don't have our logic. So. For somebody who doesn't have your logic, your cultural approach, and all that, you can expect anything, like what they're doing. So, if you give them space, they do that. And in fact, they haven't hidden to us. They have never hidden that their intention is to create a caliphate. They never hid that. And they do that They've never hidden the fact that they want to take Sharia law everywhere. Yeah. But how do they do it? They do it by going to places where the state is not sufficiently present, where the state does not act quickly, and they establish themselves. They get into those places. They intermarry. They connect themselves with local uh, 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 aristocracies. They marry into those families and they establish themselves. They distribute food, they distribute clothes, they distribute resources, and they win the population to their side. And they're willing to wait 10, 20 years. And they are patient enough to yeah. wait. Yeah. I don't know whether they're always patient because you see, when they got into Mali, they didn't take time before they declared the Sharia law mm -hmm. and were hit. And they didn't even have to wait to start moving to the capital to take over. They thought now they could establish a caliphate in Mali. Yeah. They did not even analyze that uh, it's not like that. It's not as simple as that. They were hit hard. It is true. Today, they have not. We, we, we hit them hard. We have not been able to obliterate them altogether. But definitely they are on the defensive. Mm, they're yes. on the run. And on the run. It is also the same. They managed they worked in um, syria and then from there they went into iraq, iraq. this so-called isis and now is islamic state of uh, islamic state only yes and uh, immediately they declare the caliphate well let's see how long that caliphate will last <laughs> and you know recently we also heard that uh, abu bakar shekau the head of Boko Haram yeah. has also really dedicated, I mean, declared a caliphate in some place yeah, in, in the Nigeria. north. In the north, yeah. Okay, let's see how long that caliphate will last. The continent is determined to get rid of these people. Let's wait and see. I want to ask you a question when we come back from the break, Ambassador. Will the next big war be fought along religious lines? Think about that, and also some solutions.
going forward. So you mentioned assimilating the people, the people themselves being the intelligence, the people being aware. We call that, there's a, there's a plan here locally called Nyumbakumi. They're trying to initiate that where, you know, if you live in a community and if you look around and, and see strangers coming in, strangers doing strange things, you report those. What other solutions are there going forward? Let's take a break. Um, Pastor Francisco Caetano Jose Madeira. He's head of the African Union's Center for the Study and Research on Terrorism. And that's what we're talking about. Can we win the war on terror? Not just in Kenya, not just in the region, but across the continent. It's a serious subject. Some very serious answers. Jeff Kinnegan Live takes another break. We'll be back in a moment. You're watching Jeff Koinange Live.